Another popular methodology that's out there, especially right now that's popular, is called dividend aristocrats. We're looking at dividend aristocrats. And we'll talk about how do you become a dividend aristocrat and we'll compare the results here in just a second. But the idea is you're, you're looking at dividend paying stocks only and you're looking at companies that are in the S&P for dividend aristocrats. They're looking at the S&P 500, so that's the United States, a large 500 company, the largest 500 companies, ones that are paying dividends, so it has to be a dividend payer of that S&P 500. And you're looking at those dividend companies and you're selecting from that the best of the best in terms of dividends. So you're not looking international, you're not looking small cap, you're really kind of narrowing your focus on large cap dividend companies. And so the criteria for selecting companies that become part of the dividend aristocrats and build a portfolio, let's say, of just dividend aristocrats, is you're looking at companies that have paid, or excuse me, companies that have increased their dividend for 25 straight years at least. Well, they would have paid for 25 straight years if they're increasing every year, so both paid. But the main thing is that they're increasing their dividend. Not only are they paying a dividend and at least maintaining the dividend year after year, even during tough times, but they're actually increasing it every year over the last 25 years, even during tough times like the Great Recession, 2009. You know, they would be increasing their dividend. So really what you're finding here is kind of the best of the best. That's why they're called aristocrats looking at dividend paying stocks. So dividend aristocrats, you know, historically, if you look back at the numbers, they can be very strong in rising markets because they're getting that dividend. They're consistent dividend payers. They're growing their dividends. And I like that. I, I like dividend stocks. So that's a really good thing. And they're actually really strong and extra safe in falling markets. Because when things are going bad and the whole market's going down, well, people might do what's called a flight to safety. One, they might just pull all their money out and put it in cash or under the mattress or, you know, go buy, go buy something for themselves, a shirt or a car, whatever it might be. So but they're going to pull their money out. And when they pull their money out of, let's say, growth stocks or stocks that are really falling fast, well, where's it gonna go? Well, sometimes it goes into cash or bonds, but sometimes it goes into safer stocks like dividend stocks. And so the best of the best dividend stocks in terms of paying out a dividend for 25 straight years and raising that dividend for 25 straight years is a good safe stock. It's still a stock, still volatile, but better than let's say like a, a high performing growth stock that could go up, but go down fast. So let's look at some numbers and see how these dividend aristocrats have done compared to the wider market. So this first chart here looks at these dividend aristocrats, the best of the best, the 25 straight years of paying and increasing their dividend from that large uh, uh, universe of standard poor, large 500 company stocks in the United States. And you can see how they compare to the wider universe of the S&P 500, which has a mixture of growth stocks, dividend stocks, a variety of stocks, but they're still the largest companies, the 500 largest companies in terms of market capitalization in the United States. And you can see this graph here um, that it's kind of followed the aristocrats and the overall S&P 500 really kind of followed along together. If you're looking, let's say, from 2006 on to, to 2000, uh, you know, the 2008, 2009 period. And then that's when you start really seeing a separation and the aristocrats doing better than the overall S&P 500. Remember, this is not every dividend stock in the S&P 500. It's just the aristocrats, the ones that have paid for 25 straight years. So these ones have outperformed all the other dividend stocks and those growth and other types of stocks in the wider universe over a recent period, or at least during this time period. Uh, here you can see it a little bit more numerically, and you can kind of see how uh, the aristocrats did uh, up until, let's say, 2007, 2008, 2009. You can see when we had the Great Recession and, and everything dropped real fast. Uh, the, the aristocrats dropped 21%. It was pretty bad for them too, but the overall market was down 37%. So once again, those uh, established raising their dividend in tough time companies did better than uh, than the overall S&P 500. And then as you look, you know, going to the right there over time, you can see how they've been performing either near or, or above the S&P 500 as you saw in the previous chart. So the idea is, hey, if you just buy companies that meet this aristocrat criteria, you're gonna do great. And it's a safer investment and better, it's still a stock, so it's got more risk than let's say other types of investments like cash or whatever. But you're doing better than let's say if you picked out um, uh, stocks that were not these dividend aristocrats. So it makes it very easy, right? You just figure out who's got the 25 years or you can buy a mutual fund or exchange traded funds around dividend aristocrats. Um, you just buy those stocks and then you're, you're set to go. And look, you'll always at least outperform the S&P 500. The challenge with it though, um, it, it might sound like a good strategy, right? But the challenge behind it is that whole past performance doesn't necessarily predict future results. I mean, you can see in the past, you know, where the aristocrats kind of, you know, and in many years would follow along, you know, 2007, 
you know, the aristocrats did worse. They lost money compared to, let's say, the wider market, uh, as an example. Uh, but they've had a nice run recently, of course. Now, what happens when things might, when dividend stocks fall out of favor? If interest rates, for example, were to rise, particularly if they were to rise suddenly or quickly, dividend stocks will tend, based on past history, to go down. Once again, people are looking for that income to come in. We'll buy a higher paying bond, maybe, or pay a pay higher if it was really high on a CD or on a cash type investment versus buying a riskier stock where the stock could go up and down in price or they could cut the debit and cutting their income versus something where you're locking into it more like a cash or bond type of investment where you could get that interest rate and really lock that in more securely than with any kind of stock. If that was to happen, then the dividend aristocrats would be uh, the worst thing you could do, right? So uh, be aware of what's happening in the broader market, particularly around interest rates when it comes to dividends uh, and in the broader market. But here's a strategy that says, hey, if you like big companies, you like safe big companies, you like dividends and people who grow dividends, and I'm a big believer in dividend growth companies, by the way, um, that consistently raise their dividend, I think is really good. Uh, it, it compounds over time, so it's got some great advantages for you but here they're saying you just follow this method and you'll be it'll, it'll be all a-okay you don't even have to think too hard just follow the method and I've always been cautious whenever he says follow the method follow the program because if you look back in history there's times when yeah a program works great but then all of a sudden it doesn't work great and it could be really bad for a period of time and are you willing to stick it out through the bad times and maybe it never comes back so right now dividend aristocrats look great at least during this time period uh, you can decide whether uh, that's something that maybe is going to continue in the future but it's one thing to look at but for a personal note Companies that are, if you're interested in dividend companies, companies that consistently pay a dividend, they got a good payout ratio, dividend payout ratio, and they've been doing it for many years, those are always good companies to look at. I just wouldn't necessarily buy into just buy the aristocrats and you're done. I would look at it a little bit more fundamentally and look at each individual company uh, on its own merit, or if you're looking at a mutual fund, looking at a dividend paying mutual fund or exchange traded fund on its own merit as well.